Because if you look on the Schumann today, what you'll see is four really big, thick lines across the chart of green energy, green like this um, candle holder here. And now here's what's interesting about those lines of green energy. And this is, ooh, I'm getting chills thinking about telling you and speaking with you about this. Those four green lines of energy, you will notice they correspond with the frequency bands of the Schumann resonance. Isn't that fascinating how that works? So the Schumann resonance is in a range of zero to 40 hertz. And zero to 40 hertz is the same range as human brain waves. And if you look through my series of lives and my recent videos on YouTube, you'll see that I, I have been going into detailed explanations about what I think the Schumann resonance really is and what it reflects. I think it reflects something big about us as living human beings, the bands of energy that these these four bands coincide with the frequency ranges of the Schumann resonance well these also correspond with frequency ranges of our brain waves it's very interesting so for example around eight hertz you'll see a band and this is the beginning of our alpha brain waves observing just kind of waking up out of out of sleep state and then you know being present in the world the next set of green um, band is around 12 okay 12 13 14 and this coincides with our low beta brain waves this is the beginning of our thought processes the next set is around 21 to again now we're starting to move into the mid beta brain waves and then you'll also see a green band in the high 20s around 28 on the chart um, maybe a little lower 26 7 and this will correspond with our high beta brain waves now what's also interesting is then you have a band of blue and then a band of deep, deep blue. And that band of deep, deep blue coincides with our spiritual brain waves, the gamma brain waves. And this is our spiritual connection. And it's fascinating because scientists don't really understand how the human brain generates the 40 hertz gamma brain waves. So <laughs> I check that up to D divine miracles <laughs> or science we don't yet understand. So here's what I wanted to say about the waves that occurred and um, these bands of energy that are on the chart. So one of the things that's on my Twitter right now is it's, it's so fascinating. It's a, tw a quote tweet that I did of a gentleman playing the guitar and what he did was he put the guitar he put the phone camera into the guitar and what you'll see is as he plucks the guitar the the strings vibrate and you'll notice that what they do is they make sine wave patterns just like um you would expect right how how frequency looks um, if we could see it, it, it moves in a sine wave. Well, <clears throat> and just like the emanations from the bowls, right, that I played this morning. Um, <clears throat> well, the waves of energy that occurred the in the three days um, before today, so the three days before today are the three days before Pluto has moved back into Capricorn and out of Aquarius. This is a really big moment um, in the astrological energy. 
So how I view those big waves, they're like plucking the guitar strings of ourselves, right? Of our brain waves, even of our thought processes, of our engagement with the matrix, if you will, right? The matrix of how hum humans, how we perceive reality. So these big waves of energy are like plucks on the guitar strings. And the guitar strings are the frequency ranges that are highlighted so beautifully today in the Schumann with those four green thick wave um, patterns, those four lines of green energy and the one line of deep, deep blue at the 40 hertz level. So what the waves of energy, in my view, did is they pick the guitar strings, right? They pluck them and we feel it and then it vibrates within us. And so we have the, the sine waves of that, if you will, vibrating through each of, of us and vibrating through each of us slightly differently because these energies will stir something different within each of us. You know, it might stir different thoughts, different emotions, different body sensations. And then as it goes through us, now we are vibrating because the frequency is the pure energy. The um, emission, the reception that we receive right into the human body. And then we vibrate with the patterns of energy. Then it flows out from us. That's vibration when frequency comes into form, into the physical, and then affects the physical. That's the vibration. <laughs> so these big, big waves of energy are like plucks to the, gu the guitar strings that we as humans play in the human form through our brain waves, through our thoughts and emotions, because let's face it, our emotions affect the emanation of our brain waves, don't they? Right? We choose what to think about a lot of times based on how we feel. And that can get us into patterns, actually, <laughs> that are positive or negative, but that why does it seem like it tends towards the negative? So, um, so some, sometimes it does now, especially with Pluto energy. Hmm. Yeah. So I wanted to explain to you how the recent big Schumann waves might be affecting your energy and the overall theme here is truths, the truths of our world. And this is what I discussed. Each wave pattern made a fascinating image when you doubled it. And so in my view, there were, see, there were four plus two, there were six of them. And they presented to us truths of our world. In my first video, I present the negative aspect of those truths. And in the second video, I present the positive aspect. And those are on Rumble, Twitter, and will be on my Substack. Um, what I found on a personal level, how these energies affected me, right? If they're presenting the truths of our world on an individual basis, they present the truths of ourselves. And there's a little bit of reaching for this because of important sexiles that are happening in the astrology. You see, to gain the insights, it, 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 we're invited to do the work to gain the insights. And what does that mean? So a week ago, Friday, <laughs> I did, um, I chose to do a hypnotherapy session. A friend offered to do it with me because I've been trying to make big changes in my life. And so what I've done over many weeks now, 
really since about, well, I really, I guess it really activated maybe in March or April. And I've just been praying and praying and praying. So that's a focus of thought. It's a focus of energy and it's directed energy. Prayer is directed energy between you and the divine, between you and the creator, between you and God, right? And and I worked with Jesus Christ because my family member is very, very big into, um, you know, ministry and studying the Bible. And so I just, I just kind of, activated me during some of our discussions to really engage with, with that energy, with Jesus's energy. And I also had started listening to praying medic on telegram and he has an amazing, you know, prayers, prayer series that he does. So I started using his techniques, um, of working with Jesus to take the emotions from you you know, and to heal the wound in your soul. And so that's what I was praying with Jesus for. It's amazing how big of an activation that was for me. So I'm continually, you know, focusing energy on elevating myself, right? Asking how do I break through this inner obstacle that I have. And, um, (laughs) and so through this prayer work that I did, which is energy work internally, right? So you can, you know, a lot of people, we think about praying and doing energy work externally for the world, for the earth, for others, for family members, for people that we see that seem downtrodden in some way. But how often do we do this for ourselves, right? So I focused that internally. And this relates with this relates with my Schumann resonance discussion. Okay, so now I want to, the reason that I'm bringing this up, my, my personal experience is, is to say, how do we apply the energies that have plucked our, you know, plucked the, the strings of our human energy system because they're emanating through the brainwave sets that are key for humanity between zero and 40 hertz, the same range as the Schumann resonance, right? We can see that in the four horizontal bars of green and one blue in the spiritual um, on the Schumann resonance today. Well, I, I was made an offer, you know, to work with someone to more deeply explore this block that I had. So I chose to do that. And the most amazing thing happened because I reached for it. So I accepted the offer and then I did the work. Oh gosh, it was three and a half hours. (laughs) I mean, what a long session that was. And doing the work I discovered, you know, I kept applying my focus, applying my focus, because when you're learning truths, it can be uncomfortable. And that's what happened for me. It was beyond my expectation. I, I thought that there was a certain, um, well, I wasn't sure, but I figured there would just be one event or one thought pattern blocking my progress in my life. And that's not what it was. It was this this complete set of memories about being very 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 young, you know, even even um, you know going back to being a baby. So being a youth, you know, very small child and being a baby, and these memories were linked together. And what I saw was that matrix. Yeah, thanks for the love. Yeah, I, I definitely needed the love in this situation. I'll tell you that. I saw that matrix programming, if you will. I saw how I, from a very young age, became separated from myself, really, in a couple key areas where I was essentially programmed to think a certain way, to experience the world and interact with the world a certain way. And it was sad. It was sad and it was you know, painful in the memory 
I was crying and, you know, <laughs> um, and yet I was also so grateful. And, you know, I wouldn't say I was happy. I wouldn't say I was joyful because it was not a pleasant memory. The truths of, you know, how these things set my life up to be a certain way that now in my life impedes my ability to have progress in a certain area or impeded. <laughs> now it's in the past. But I just had this overwhelming sense of gratitude and awe, awe that my prayers are being answered and I was seeing the truth, number one. And gratitude that even though it was unpleasant to see the truth and to know the truth, that I knew that I would be able to take this and have the tool sets to shift this out of my life, to shift this programming out of my life. And indeed, over the past week, what I've been doing is I've been creating a webinar. <laughs> it's so exciting, really. It's so exciting because, you know, see, now that, uh, and I was talking with another girlfriend, explaining to her, you know, we were talking about what happened. And I was explaining to her, okay, this is what happened. And this is how my shift, my th thoughts shifted. So the reason I'm relating this with the Schumann resonance is because you see these waves of energy came in. And I think what they're doing is they're giving us the divine grace and support to see truths in literally any aspect of our life we wish to, because look at where the green resonance is highlighting. It's highlighting our alpha, low beta, mid beta, high beta, and gamma brainwave areas. We literally have the power and the resources to bring this energy and apply it in any set or multiple sets of our brainwaves and thought processes that we want to. And, and I'm so grateful for this, right? Because because now I can change my life. You can use the energy to change your life. But it's so interesting because, you know, when you look at the green on the Schumann resonance chart, it can look very passive, can't it? It can look very passive. And so you see, hmm. The divine offers us these energies, right? We're offered these energies, but it's up to us to reach for it and then to focus and apply it to do, and that's doing the work. Now, here's what I want to do. <laughs> I want to take this candle that you might, you might be able to see the flicker and I'm going to put it here. Okay. I'm going to put it here where you can see it. Yeah. Now you can see it in the video. I'm, I'm. I don't want to move the microphone because I don't want to cause a tech issue here. But do you see how I had to do the work for you to see the light? How did these things happen? How did that happen that I was recording this and the setup of the physical objects in the background is now perfect for physically demonstrating the concept we've been talking about? I just... You know what? I did a whole bunch of prayer work before doing this live stream, and I called in all the archangels, Archangel Uriel, Archangel Michael, Archangel Gabriel, Archangel Raphael, and I asked them, please be present, please guide me as I'm speaking, and look what happens. This exact thing, right? We're just talking about accessing the truths. What is a metaphor for that light? And the light, I I didn't know I had hidden it behind the microphone. And see, but I have to do physical effort. I have to reach. I had to move it to be just in the right place for this light to show, for you to be able to see it and perceive it from viewing on your screen. <laughs> Isn't that amazing how that worked? And I'm just, I'm just amazed over and over again. When we choose to access these energies, right? When we consciously engage with the divine and we reach for that connection and that connection is within, but you see me here reaching without, right? I'm reaching with my hand out to you. <laughs> I'm reaching here for the candle to properly position it. So I'm having to do work, right? I'm doing work in the physical world 
to communicate, to have the expression of the energy. And that's the same thing that I, I use these notes. See, I did it ahead of time. You know, for, for some people, we get the energy ahead of time. Maybe that's, I get it ahead of time so that I can learn and share. I don't know. That's my, that's my excuse. (laughs) That's my rationale in the moment that makes sense to my human mind. But some of us get it during, some of us get it after. In fact, um, on Twitter, Coyote Sanctuary. I think the account is at Coyote Sanctuary. He told me that he had watched my videos a few times. Thank you for doing that. Thanks for all of you who are present here in the live. And and I'm so grateful for your presence. And thank you for those of you watching the replay. Well, what he said was he watched the videos and that he was doing an after action report. And I thought that was so obvious. You know, so obvious and awesome that he was doing that for himself, right? That is another example of doing the work. And this is, you know, this is the work of the spiritual warrior. And I'm going to, I'm doing actually a a separate section on that next. Okay. Um, Not next after the astrology section, but you see, it takes reaching for it and it takes reaching within to do the inner work. And what does that mean? Every time you reach within, That is actually what devotion is. Every time you pray within for clarity, that is what devotion is. That is inner directed energy. You know, we think about directed energy as being something that is weaponized externally as a technology. All right. In my videos um, under the Human Resonance playlist, you'll find I have two videos on prayer as directed energy. This is a human technology. Directed energy from a laser beam or from any other type of technology is a reflection of what is natural to the human being. When we pray, we are directing energy. You're invoking God. You're invoking, you know, Jesus. You're invoking the divine. And then you are engaging with the the divine and asking the divine to apply itself in some way for you, with you. (sighs) Isn't that incredible? And look what happens when we do that, right? I prayed before this live stream to be guided. And then look how the event with the candle that just happened, look how that flowed perfectly. The sine waves flowed through me in creation and ended up there, the candle, (laughs) and ended up in our engagement together. So we were talking about the Schumann resonance waves pouring out onto the chart in the three days before Pluto moved from Aquarius back into Capricorn. The fact that we had these waves right before Pluto moved out of Aquarius into Capricorn, I feel it's relevant. Why would that be? In my beginner playlist, I have a video that Visit, like that shows the physical movement of energy from the sun into Earth's electromagnetic field. And I feel that the planets and the movement of the planets do something similar. So as you may know, if you've been following me for some time, I have the ability to see an energy. I have clairvoyance for energy. And I've proven this out in the physical. For example, um, I worked, (laughs) there was a period of time where I worked with a handful of inventors on their energy technology. Um, And one of the people that I worked with was was not an inventor, but was using an an invention um, to do physical healing. And this was actually an FDA approved device. Okay. And um, they, on the, on the in packaging inserts and the technology insert did not describe it the way that I'm going to describe the technology. Um, but they had a scientific basis and they had a patent for it and everything. So in this case, I was working with a practitioner who was using this technology on people. And 
what happened was she, she was asking me if I wanted a session with this. And I asked her if I could see the information. And because I've always, you know, worked with energy, I started telling her about the technology, having only seen it like there it is, there's the insert, here's the technology. And so I just, I immediately had an understanding of how it worked because I've studied this for so long. And so what happened was, I said, would you like me to show you how this works? And what I showed her, she, there was a, a device, right? She had a choice of several different devices to use with each person. And she used a device based upon a written description of what the device worked for. And so what happened was, she showed me the, the head, right? The, the, the nozzle that was emitting energy and each one was shaped different. So what I did for her was I drew the energy pattern for her that emitted from every device because I could, when she turned the machine on, and the thing is, is with these machines, they work without being turned on because they are actually, their source of energy is not really <laughs> well understood. Um, but, um, but I drew the patterns that were emitting from the device for her. So let's say there were four heads or the, there was either four or six of them. And I drew a pattern for each of the devices. So what happened was later on, when I went back to talk to her and work with her, she told me that she was getting, I said, how, how's it going? She said she was getting above average results because the company, you know, published, it collected data back from the practitioners using the device. And she was, she was um, achieving above average results relative to the performance of other practitioners using these devices from this company that was producing an energy device that was being used um, to help heal people. Um, and so, um, uh, so, so I said to her, well, well, why, why are you, why do you think that you're producing above average results? And what she said was, it's because of the energy patterns you drew for me. When you drew those energy patterns, it helped me understand how the energy was coming out of the device. And then I could direct it better when I was interacting with people. And I thought, oh, that's so cool. <laughs> so, um, you know, so that is an anecdotal, but yet an actual example of, you know, I'm just explaining to you an example where I can, that I can see energy and that I've had it actually confirmed back to me um, by someone who's using an energy device. So at any rate, what I'm, what I'm trying to say here is that um, when we pray, when we do energy work, when we set intentions, if we do it in co-creation with the divinity that we are, then we are directing energy. And um, if we do it without co-creation, that's a different story. And that involves... Um, working with the third and fourth dimensions, okay, from a human perspective. And I'm going to explain that. Well, I guess I might as well explain it now, okay? So I'm going to do the human energy portion of the, the discussion right now. The human energy aspect here is that our divine, our energy is from the divinity within us, right? The life force within us. When we do that activation, that's what the meditation at the beginning was about, calling in the soul activation within the heart, creating that activation within the heart, asking to work with the essence of one's own soul with divine guidance. And when you do that, and then you intentionally ask to align your will with divine will through you. So how I do this is in meditation, in prayerful connection, in when I'm doing energy work, 
the first thing that I do is I ask to align with the highest good as determined by God through me. So this isn't a mental analysis. It's not an emotional feel, right? It's an understanding of receiving guidance from the divine. And this is between you and God. You have the capability to do this. You can do it through body check-ins, you know, kinesiology. So that would be, do I feel, you know, more open? Do I get a yes response from my body or do I feel more closed and contracted? Do I get a no response, especially in the heart? But there are other ways of sensing this. You know, some people, their hairs raise up on their arm. They get a twitch somewhere. They get an intuitive hit. Some people use their, their fingers. I have a friend who does this, you know, and when she asks her spirit, if and she puts the fingers together. If they come apart, it's no. If they stay together, it's yes. You can also move your fingers in other ways. Different people have different abilities to have the divine yes or no through them. Everyone I've talked to has always said that they have a tell. You know, they have something that the divine has, has, has shown them. They just know. And this is a human capability. In my view, this is a talent a gift that the divine gives every living human being is that energy coming through us in divine connection is infinite. And then when we do prayer work and then we align that with the highest good and divine will through us, how do you do that? You do that by simply asking, right? I ask that my prayer, I ask that my intention align with divine will through me. I choose to align with divine will through me. I choose that to align this with the highest good. So I'll pray for something for myself and I'll say in alignment with the highest good. And my intention is already in alignment with divine will through me. So when you're praying this way, when you are meditating this way, when you are doing energy work this way, what you are doing is you are operating and working at a fifth dimensional and higher state of being. Why is that? You are coming from your wholeness, the wholeness the basis and fundamental nature of your own wholeness is that it's the soul energy emanating through your physical body and your physical form. That is the at the basis of fifth dimensional energy. <laughs> yes, it does have a lot of, of ramifications. <laughs> now, I want to contrast that with, with operating with energy as human only. This can be done in the third and the fourth dimensions. Okay. And in the third and the fourth dimensions, we have the ability through our free will choices to simply make a human choice. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> to make a human choice to work with energy. And there are many ways that, that this can be done, right? But what I want to do here is I want to tell the story of why and how I chose and learned to go with divine will through me and to align with the highest good. <laughs> so this is a story, a personal story, and it's about human energy and the application of energy. And the reason I'm telling this in my Schumann Resonance Live is because what benefit is, this, is, is looking at and understanding something like the Schumann Resonance unless we understand how to apply it ourselves and how it works in our human energy and our energy field. And then we can take that energy and use it, right? So now in the human energy portion of this discussion, I'm talking about we can use the energy connected with our divine source and co-creation, which is very powerful. Okay, a very powerful way to use energy. We can use this energy from the human standpoint only. And in this disconnected state, which characterizes most of human experience until we have connectedness and we focus our consciousness into a more connected state through actively pursuing that within. Yeah. Ah, uh, well, so those are 
sort of, those are the ways, right? And in a disconnected state, we can try to do good or we can do chaos, right? Because some souls are of the light and some souls are of chaos, just naturally. That's just how it is and in human incarnation, right? So this is, this is a really interesting topic. But what I want to say is that this is, this is, this is how I learned about this. You know, I think, I think understanding how, why did I learn that this was important? Well, what I did was I applied those energies within. And when I applied those energies within in my life, I believe Pluto was actually going over my midheaven, which is your sole purpose. You know, the midheaven is what are you here to do in life from a soul perspective? Well, when I looked back at it later, that's what I determined. That was the astrology. And when Pluto comes into your life, when Pluto aspects key parts of your astrology chart, you can't really help but see the changes, right? See the truths and then the resulting changes that are going to happen, you will experience. And so I want to tell this personal story because Pluto is going, is, is active in our lives as the human collective right now. There's nothing we can do about it. We're in a cycle, we're in astrology cycle of all of the planets moving from being in one sign to then moving through the next sign. So they were, they had all moved into and then out of Pisces. And now this is the last one, Pluto, right? It moved into Aquarius. It gave us a taste of what that would be like, which for me, it was awesome. I loved Pluto and Aquarius. It was so much better than Pluto and Capricorn oh, in the last degrees, <laughs> especially. <laughs> but, um, you know, P Pluto... It, it will, it has the energy of force and it will force us to see the truth, you know, and is this an aspect of divine will or is this an aspect of the darkness? <laughs> it's both. It's both because dark and light are both of divinity. The creator created the entire range of experience. <laughs> For us. And so Pluto forcing us to see the truth. Okay. The truth will, will present itself. Right. And then there are times in life where we will be forced to see what those truths are and it can go easy or it can go hard. And <laughs> that's, that's where we all are right now with Pluto moving from Capricorn into Aquarius, it can go easy for us or it can go hard. The more that we resist and try to turn away from the truth, that's where it gets hard and difficult with Pluto because anything blocking our experience and view of the truth in our personal lives, it, it won't stand. We will see the truth. Now, did I just talk about the aspect of reaching for the truth? Yes, I did. That's the work of the spiritual warrior, right? To reach for the truth, to choose within, to experience the revealing of the truth and then work with that energy. That's literally what we've seen in the Schumann resonance. You know, the big outpouring of six waves of light, you know, some of them quite dramatic. Woo. Yeah, it's awesome. And, you know, on earth creation is within threes, right? It's within threes. And, and so to experience the waves within the three days before Pluto moving into Aquarius, moving from Aquarius into Capricorn, that's big. And now it's plucked the guitar strings of our human brain waves of Human experience and the human resonance. And we get to decide how we're going to flow on the sine wave of this energy, right? How is that going to be experienced? And if you want a visual representation of sine waves and, and how that creates something in the physical, in this case, beautiful, incredible music, you can look at my Twitter. I'll link it 
um, when we do the live replay. Um, but you can see this beautiful, like this, this musician put the phone in his guitar and you can see how every guitar string, it makes a different literal up in, you know, the, the valleys and the peaks sine wave of, uh, it literally moves that way, the guitar strings, and it changes based on the notes. It's so fascinating. So, so I want to tell you the story of how I found out and learned that it's important to move within divine will and what that does for us, how it elevates our prayer work, our energy work, and our intentional work. And, you know, whether it's in prayer, meditation, working with energy, this is a huge upgrade to choose to align with divine will. And you don't have to know the details of divine will. You simply make the statement when you do your prayer, when you do your energy work, as you're doing your meditation, whatever your intentions are, I choose that, that, that this aligns with the highest good. And you can say, I choose this outcome in alignment with the highest good, for example. You know, use the words, make it work for you. Use the words that work for you. Use the expression, play with different ways of voicing this to yourself out loud or internally telepathically. Either way, God can hear you. <laughs> right? And so there's a phrase in the Bible where that, that talks about declare an, an outcome and I will make it unto you. That's how divine creation works. You declare the outcome. You declare the outcome in alignment with the highest good, in alignment with divine will. Um, and then we trust in our co-creation with the divine to make it beautiful, to make it in alignment with the highest good, even if it looks like, you know, a crazy storm before we see the beautiful benefits. And, you know, um, just like what happened earlier in this live stream, we're suddenly moving the candle into view right here. Wow. Where's my <laughs> right here, <laughs> right on the side of my microphone. That was, that was the outcome, right? I did prayer ahead of time asking to, to be guided, to flow with my guidance over what to say, how to speak with you all about energy and the human resonance. And that was created, right? This, this incredible outcome. It was, it was truly amazing, really. Okay. So <clears throat> I want to tell this story. All right. So here we go. <clears throat> it turned out that Pluto several years ago was going over my mid heaven. I didn't know it at the time, but what happened is I got this incredible insight that opened up a new soul purpose for me. It opened up my ability to pursue something that I had always dreamed about, but I never thought was going to be possible. <laughs> you know, I always thought this would always be something that would only be in my dreams. And what was that? It was doing something with energy in my physical life as work. And um, I know that that might sound weird now, today. Because a lot of people are out on social media talking about energy and consciousness. But from the perspective of, of how I was raised, of what my life was like, of who I was as a person, I couldn't imagine that. You know, I just couldn't imagine it. <laughs> but of course, the divine, you know, my soul chose differently, right? I... I I, I, I put out a video about my choices around 9-11 and that I, you know, how that rolled out in my life and how that there was the potential because of the work I did for me to be there and I wasn't there. And it's interesting because that, you know, put me on the path of having a different kind of career. And so what happened was uh, over 10 years ago, I started to, I was working with a mentor and I was having these 
you know, I was exploring these dreams that I had been given through my life. And in one of the dreams, it was so fascinating. I was, <laughs> I was looking through kind of a, a screen, like a computer screen. And it was so weird because in the dream, it was like ancient times, but I was looking through a computer screen. How is that possible? But I was looking through a computer screen in this, in this vision, dream, vision, but it was a vision that I had, you know, years ago. And I had that vision. Um, and in it, because I, I was, I had a career. Okay. And my coworker was in this vision and in the vision, my coworker once again, worked with me. Um, but it was ancient times and it was long ago on earth. Yet I was looking through a computer screen and I could see these, these symbols or hieroglyphics, but, but in this program, right that I could see in the computer screen, what I saw as I looked into it, the program, this is hard to explain, but the program was in 3D, the program in this computer. It was in 3D and I could look into it and perceive, have 3D perception of the computer program. Okay. <sighs> yeah. And what I could see was that there were holes that had been made in the program. And what I could see as, as I, I had the dream more than once and I gained more information with the various um, parts of the vision. But as I looked into the computer program and I saw the holes, I could see that it was an energy matrix and that the vertices of the matrix sort of were at different points. There were different symbols at different points. You see, when you work with energy at a higher level, it's not really math-based <laughs> in the way that we think of technology as coming from math and, and being created numerically, right? We start with calculations and numbers of things, but you don't actually need that. <laughs> if you understand the geometry that those can create. Okay. So, so that's sort of an, a, an idea of how this technology functioned, except for the, there wasn't math um, at the basis of these geometries. And that's why they were so powerful because <clears throat> geometrically based math geometrically based <laughs> creations um, from, from the human concept of math only. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to go that way. Sorry. <laughs> Stop with the mind. I want to go with the, the divine guidance here. Okay. So, cause the, what happens is the mind gets interested and starts talking. So my mind was just doing that and that's not what I want. All right. So back to the vision. So in the vision, I could see, right, that the energies and how it played out and there were gaps in the energy patterns or gaps in this geometry. And why do you think I love energy so much, right? Because I've done this before. And um, here's the thing. Okay. I, I can see why my mind just went into thinking about it. It was a weird thing in that lifetime. I had the ability to work with energy, but I was very sort of human driven, assuming that I was human at the time. Um, I was Atlantean. It was during Atlantis. I was Atlantean. And I, I, my memory of Atlantis is I feel like I looked human or humanoid or humanish. And I feel like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So anyway, um, this was, of course, at the destruction of Atlantis, right? Because what happened was the energy matrix of Atlantis was destroyed, was sabotaged. And 
it reverberated in such a way that it caused this incredible destruction and sinking of land and uh, da, 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 da. it was it was horrible um but it it was tied in with the energy matrix of the earth in such a way that when it when it was sabotaged and it started vibrating a certain way it was a dissonant energy and so looking back at that from this lifetime, and I'm just going to invoke a space of sacred discharge and view by the violet flame. <sighs> yeah, it was, it was, I mean, sure, it sounds technically interesting, but it was a horrible memory because the reason that it was horrible was because I saw how disconnected from God I was in working with the technology. <sighs> Yeah. And that's why no matter how it affects my views, no matter how it affects anything, I talk about God and, and I do not consent for it any longer to affect my views, the distribution of my materials, anything. I don't consent anymore to that. You know, I was in a um, energy loop, a creation pattern on it, and I'm done with that now, and I don't consent anymore, right? I forgive myself for the past, but what I could see in the past was that I was creating technology, and it was using divine energy. It was a very, very advanced technology. It was not just me. There was a lot of us. We literally had like divi a division that was responsible for this. And it was over time, right? Because Atlantis went, went on for who knows how many thousands of years. So I'm on, simply only talking about one aspect of a lifetime. And it was just my personal experience and vision of what happened that I'm sharing here. What I'm trying to say is, why did I discover that I now choose in all my creations to align with divine will and the highest good was because I remember the horrible, horrible, horribleness of working with the technology and thinking, oh yes, this is what we need to do. We have to do it this way. We have to put out emanations of energy so that people can align with this and then everyone will be at this energy pattern. We were essentially making the chemtrails of today, but with frequency and sine waves. Yep, that's what we were doing. And, and we knew we were doing it because we thought that this was a really good idea and everyone should do this. But here's where the dissonance was. When you force that, it's not in alignment with free will choices, which is against divine principle. And that will automatically set up a feedback pattern in the technology that goes into the lower dimensions. We did not consider the interdimensional effects <laughs> of using technology in that way. Oops. Oops. <laughs> Shucks. Uh, you know, I'm bringing my human sort of dark humor now to this dark humor. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's how it is, you know, and that's what I see happening today. I see people using all kinds of advanced technologies and not understanding what's really happening and what the effect of that would be. So, so now I'm on the side of all that, you know, and, um, I just make videos and share my perspective and I like doing this instead because it was so, it was so hurtful as a soul to participate in that. And I can't tell you how many thousand for being involved in that and for being involved in you know, technology and in that work. I mean, it was thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of years. 
to get to the point where I could incarnate again and forgive that person that I was at that time. <laughs> that is beauty stuff. And so that's why I learned always in alignment with the highest good as determined by God, the, the most high, the creator of all that is, you know, the I am that I am, you know, the God of Jesus Christ, right? The creator that sent Jesus Christ, the source of my own soul, always. That's what I want to do at 9 11 a.m. here this time, 9 1 1, right? Because, because, yeah, it's, it's, so, um, <laughs> So that is how I came to become so passionate about this. And that is how, no matter how many people watch my videos, I, I don't care. I, I really don't. I just, all I want to do is share as I'm, I'm shown by the divine. And I will talk about creating in alignment with divine source in co-creation I will talk about God. I will talk about Jesus. I will talk about the soul because that's the only thing that matters. And that's what, that's, that's how you elevate yourself in this lifetime. When you choose to give up, right? The human only, I will do it this way because I want to, <laughs> Because I know it's the best. I know that this is how it has to be done. I know that the entire earth should do it this way. Violet flame over that. No, I don't. You know, but but in the lifetime where I was working on this technology, I had that sense. Okay, it was ancient times, but we had more advanced technology. And, and in, in a way, okay, because I don't know everything that's available now, do I? I don't. And the human technology, what's capable with my body and energy field, I can tell you now, okay, my vision of what's to come is far greater than what we had at that time. Simply what can be done through the human being with no wires, no um, implants, physical or astral. You know, the human capability that we have in this body and energy field is extraordinary. You know, look at the simple creation of, you know, having the light, right? Moving the light and having the whole story of what was happening on this live stream come into physical form like that, where I move the light and it fit perfect with the story. This is what I'm saying. Creation begins in energy. And that lifetime is what caused me to choose to create an alignment with divine will. And that's it. That's what I will do. And, and, and I'm just going to right now set an intention that, um, that I am healed from, from that lifetime and, and my ability to receive in this lifetime, because, because I felt that I didn't deserve to receive from that lifetime because of being, bad in that like you're creating a poor outcome <laughs> however i did write a story about atlantis which i guess i'll link um an article in which i explain that you know sometimes we embody the kali energy in a lifetime k-a-l-i sometimes we choose to be used as a force of destruction by the creator and um that is a valid lifetime and way to live as well. <laughs> and this is why whether you're a soul of chaos or a soul of light, you can return home to your divine source. You can return home. All that's required is forgiveness of the self for what was done. And that's how I returned and I healed that Atlantean lifetime. That's how I brought her off of the bottom of the ocean. The soul you know, the, the person that I was at that time, you know, she was just in a rack at the bottom of the ocean, <laughs> essentially, you know, as a soul, just 
having participated in that. And, you know, love, divine love and grace. It's the only way <laughs> to recover. Well, it's the way that I found. Maybe there's another way that I don't know about, but maybe it's compassion. Maybe it's, you know, something else. But divine love and grace and connection with Jesus for me is, and Jesus Christ guiding me in my life. Those are the things that healed me.